When I came to Brighton to study this course, what appealed to me was the fact that it wasn't a straight art history course, but it was more grounded in a sort of material culture study and not high art. And I thought that was a lot more interesting in looking at history and looking at sort of how these things affect people more day to day than in a sort of high culture um, sphere, I suppose. The history of art and design that we teach here at Brighton begins around 1750. Yeah. We start in the middle of the 18th century looking at the history of all kinds of art and design objects and the relationships between them. Uh, we look at everything from teapots to hats to paintings to prints to photograph albums. So he's not using the devices of texture that we recognize in Impressionist painting, but he is using the subjects. And this painting, Paris Street, Rainy Day. Again, there's a huge sense of atmosphere in this painting that includes um, anonymity and alienation. Many of the figures are isolated. It includes the atmosphere of the outdoors, this kind of gray city day the wide streets that make everybody into, into a spectacle. We teach the history of paintings, we'll teach the history of designed objects, but it's not only that. But the skills that students might acquire by looking at 19th century Impressionism, they could apply to looking at things inside the wallet of a family member. Also things that you'll find in your loft that you'll find in your grandmother's uh, left-behind purse, mm. that you'll find in car boot sales and in the uh, vintage shops that are all around Brighton. Yes, I did see that. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. If you're interested in manufacturing and sort of high street fashion, they're a good one to look at. I think Lou found this one. I think Lou found this one actually on sale in the 80s, hanging up outside a shop in Brighton for like, something like 12 quid. Yeah, so she was, obviously they didn't know what it was. So they just, but there you can see how it's sort of constructed. But this is a very typical 1740s, it's a damask. Oh, and damask is, basically, you know, monochrome. Um, Dior, John Kavanagh, sort of very much a forgotten designer now, John Kavanagh, but we have lots of Michael Sherrard, another designer from the sort of late 40s, 50s, almost completely forgotten, actually, but loads of Michael Sherrard here, so you could do some amazing original research, make your career based on it. Um, If a student comes here and, and wants to study history of art and design, we will teach in a university manner. So you'll have lectures, and, and that's really important because that is the performance of a, a, of a lecturer's knowledge for students and an opportunity to meet and engage and ask formal questions. So we can see these floating display cases with the jewellery sort of exhibited in them. And I don't know if any of you have been to it, but when you walk into the space, they're more or less at the height an able-bodied person would actually wear a necklace. We also teach in small seminars and I think that's really important because for me the, the key in some ways is a dialogue between a lecturer and a student. For me I think the seminars have been the best part of the degree. You learn together, you get to bounce ideas off each other and you know it, it gives you skills like you know trying to, trying to tackle a problem or a theory as a group. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's basically just like a big conversation. It doesn't actually feel like you're learning something, but you are, you know, you really are. And, and then that practice of memorialisation. And so then if we can think a little bit about Emily's work, where you're saying something that wasn't a memorial has become a memorial. So how and why has a memorial function ended up on the India Gate? 
if you were going to look um, I really enjoy seminars at university. I think you learn how to listen and take on board other people's views and to create discussions from them. It kind of makes you more confident. I think when I started out at university I was very shy and I didn't really contribute a lot. And then now I'm in my third year, I find I do kind of talk more and I'm more willing to kind of give my point and argue a point if I think that it's necessary. I found something out really interesting. China. China, that was it. Where is it? China. Yeah. Um, China's you now got seven major auction houses. And I think they're like make up make up like thirty percent of the art market, the global mar art market or something. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it was thirty it was thirty percent. Yeah. Ten years ago they only had six percent or something. <laughs> Hello. I've got my dissertation in sort of like two parts. That's fine. Yeah. Is that alright? Yeah, I no can put it all in one. No, 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 no. I've got your name on it. And who's your? I'm Claire. Fabulous. That's all done. That's all you need to do. <laughs> Thank you. See you later, Emily. The critique is beyond what they do. Yeah. It's about their circumstances and the society that they're in. Whereas you are explicitly critiquing them. Yeah, yeah. And so there's some quite difficult issues around yeah. how to deal with the interviews and the ethics involved in that. First page, you need to mention a little bit more about clothing as your um, key thing. Mm -hmm. And then later on in the introduction where you explicitly say, um, I'm talking about clothing and clothing is really important and dress has a very significant element to it in terms yeah. of these debates. Then you can say as suggested or, or as I've already yeah. um, said so you can refer back to what you've already done. We haven't got a title yet. No, I've been thinking <laughs> about it. I'm thinking something along the lines of exploring cultural borrowing between the West and Native Americans like in fashion and dress or something like Pithy, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean that menswear and womenswear are equal, like they're sort of equal profits for, for uh, both or yeah. okay. menswear is just slightly more Okay, okay. More significantly. Okay. Um, so I thought this was really interesting because it actually says Ted oh, Baker I, London, I but it's <laughs> got the Paris so is the Paris is, is Paris is that the name of the like the name of the no, style, this or is was it the only thing I can find with okay. the Paris label? Okay. Okay. I so it it's was just really, really skinny. Curious. Yeah, yeah, it is. And is this? A, it's a sort of black and white. Is yeah. it a sort of old-fashioned yeah, picture like, of? Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Very okay. Vintage. Yeah. Great. Okay. Good. My name is Catherine Buckland. I'm doing the MA History of Design and Material Culture course here. So for my dissertation, I am looking at the registered designs at Kew to explore women's ready-to-wear morning dress between 1860 and, at the moment, 1883. You'd obviously have your legs in it, and it would tie up here, round your waist, and then the skirt would go over the top. Obviously, like I say, if I was wearing it, I'd be in it. And I probably wouldn't be wearing trainers. We spend a lot of time talking about things and examining things, their, their character, their properties, to study the past in a wide range of ways that help us to illuminate uh, the, the character of those objects and to understand the people who use them and why they use them in that way. Uh, so there's a lot of reading, there's a lot of talking, there's a lot of looking, there's a lot of walking around and a lot of enjoying the uh, discoveries that you make about these things when you start to think about them in a, in a more historically nuanced way.